Now for the big board, our team of insiders are standing by live to win. And today's top stories, TJ is right here feeling chipper this Monday morning. Oh, good. I don't know why. <laughs> What's going on with me on a Monday? But let's do this. Okay, well, you hold on. We're going to come back here in right. a second. I want to go to Becky Worley to begin with because she had some news breaking on the big board. It comes from Facebook. They're taking on eBay and Craigslist with a new service called Facebook Marketplace. So, Becky, what's this about? George, Facebook exclusively telling ABC News that starting today, users will be able to buy and sell from each other within the Facebook app. Users on the phone will see a shop icon. You click that, you see items listed in your area, maybe a friend of a friend or across the world. You mentioned this bites into all kinds of e-commerce giants, eBay, Craigslist, also small businesses, uh, sites like Etsy maybe. Uh, now, one thing Facebook won't be doing, handling the Facebook, the payment side of transactions. Mm. Uh, they're going to leave that to folks using the service to decide on. You can use PayPal, Venmo, even this other amazing payment type. We call it cash or check. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that, Becky. Now, you know, with any kind of website like this where buying and selling involve, there's concern about fraud. So what is Facebook doing about that? They say, Robin, that because you can check someone's profile, it gives you real-world context on the person that you can feel safe or not about making a purchase. They do say you can file a complaint against a seller if you get a fake or it's not as it was described. And if they see a pattern, that seller can be banned from the marketplace. Hmm. But I, I don't know. Would you guys feel more comfortable buying from a friend of a friend on Facebook or someone on eBay with a five-star gold rating? Ooh, that's, that's a good question. That's one that people are going to be scratching their heads over. But... You, you know, every time I play with cash these days, people look at me like, oh, what, what, cash? What's that about? Thank you, Becky. Now to a new battle over high school dances. The Wall Street Journal highlighting schools around the country that are banning them because of concerns about underage drinking and drug use. A lot of students and parents are, they don't like this. And TJ, what's going on here? Yeah, this, this ain't footloose, eh, right? Mm -hmm. Nobody in that movie was trying to keep Kevin Bacon from dancing because they thought he'd show up to the prom drunk. That's what we're talking about here, particularly a school outside of Boston. The latest to do this said it's not worth the headache. Kids are showing up, falling all over the dance floor, throwing the up. Liability the liability, too. And the lie, that's going to be a legal liability. But they're saying, what's the point of it anymore? And even though underage drinking has gone down in this country over the past 15 years, binge drinking is the problem. Kids don't drink as often, but when they do, they're trying to get wow. plastered. They're trying to get drunk. And remember, guys, back in the day, we had one dance. We had the prom. That's These it, days, they got the spring fling, oh. the fall dance, the homecoming, the mm -hmm. senior, the junior, the sophomore dance. So they said, forget all those, we'll just do a prom. So the school's taking matter into their own hands, but a lot of people say, and I think they're right, yeah. it's up to the parents first. Yes. Now, you talked about liability first. This is one of the things with, with the school. Suppose some kid, God forbid, gets drunk at the school, gets in a car, hurts himself, mm. hurts somebody else. The school could be liable. But people are looking at this like you're throwing out the baby with the bathwater. You got a couple of bad apples. You're canceling these things all together. Overwhelmingly, the kids are good kids. And why am I policing the kids? The schools are saying these are you got some responsibility at home for your kid not showing up drunk. I mean, the fact that they're showing up, showing up a lot of times. Oh, gosh. All right, teacher. Let's Thank lighten you. it up. Yeah, yeah okay. let's, a little more let's Saturday Night Live right now. You oh, saw a little bit Alec Baldwin, Kay McKinnon taking on that debate. Let's take another look. My microphone is broken. <laughs> she broke it with Obama. She and Obama stole my microphone. They took it to Kenya. <laughs> They took my microphone to Kenya and they broke it and now it's broken. <laughs> not, a, uh, not a response, more of a request. Can America vote right now? <laughs> Let's talk to Chris Connolly about this right now. Big hit for SNL, biggest premiere ratings in eight years. What do you think of it? Well, I think as far as Alec, you know, he's one of the two most talented non-cast members in the history of SNL, along with someone like Steve Martin. And of course, all of his skills comedically were on display as he did Trump. He had the intonation, he had the look, he had the lines. You could say it was broad, but I think that was part of the job description. He was there in large part to set up Kate McKinnon's amazingly nuanced take on Hillary, giving us the outer Hillary and the inner Hillary at the same time. So I think the initial report card would say uh, strong performance, and for the semester it's still incomplete. <laughs> A little incomplete. We haven't had this reaction since uh, Tina Fey uh, with Sarah Palin, and her numbers, Sarah Palin's numbers, dropped a little bit after what uh, Tina Fey did, about, uh, I think, 16% in 2008. What kind of impact do you anticipate, or, or is there going to be any kind of impact because of this? There, there will be photos. none. There will be no <laughs> impact. Parody and satire are fainting dead away in the face of reality. 
There is just no way you can satirize or parody what's going on in this election cycle. In this one, it's, it's a very tough business well, to be making fun of things. You just Chris up with that question. But, no, but it's so tough. I mean, how often have we been saying these past months and saying this is like an SNL skit? Well, what we're seeing actually happening on, on the campaign trail. Oh, it's just amazing to witness, you know. And you saw last, you saw in that debate sketch. In fact, they made a joke on Hillary with that Miss Universe thing. They they had her call Miss Universe a prop, and that was kind of an interesting sort of wink of the show, saying that the job that used to be done by comedy to get under the skin of candidates is now being mm, done by the yeah. candidates themselves. Yeah. That's one of the ways this is different from anything we've seen before. Like That's that. a good point. Parody proof election from Chris <laughs> Connolly. <laughs> Chris, thank you. Well, Becky, shaking your head. Thank you very much, TJ. Always good to have you, you, got, you got with us.